There she is. Let's get up for show four. Just cheers, Almeida. Cheers out for everybody. Done that myself. Just come up here and told you my name. So she was Amanda. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hey. Uh, I've been getting a little offended by radio advertisements lately. I heard this ad the other day. Um, it was on an urban station, so most of you probably haven't heard it. But it was basically like this. Oh, girl, what happened to your carpet? Well, you know, my kids just be running around all day, and it's like really hard to maintain a house at home. Well, you need to take yourself at home deep out. And then a very middle American voice comes on and describes the website and the rest of Home Depot. But every time I hear an ad like that, I'm like, why does it have to sound like that? Black people understand words. It doesn't have to sound like dialogue from a Tyler Perry film for us to understand how to buy our products. <laughs> Get it. I can just imagine the next Home Depot marketing meeting where they're trying to up their sales and they're like, all right, we already got most of them with the mm girl commercial, but you gotta kick it up a notch, get the rest of them in here. And so they re-record it and it's like, damn girl, you're probably looking trashy. Pew, pew, pew. Well, you know, my baby's kids just be running around all day. And I was cooking chicken on the stove and the grease was popping onto the carpet. And then Trey Trey rolled up in here with his muddy boots from his construction job. Cause he didn't go to college and can't get no better job. Girl, where is Trey Trey anyway? Girl, he got arrested. Cops looked right up in the window, saw him selling drugs. Girl, don't you know they sell window treatments at Home Depot for $17.99? <laughs> and then Home Depot. <laughs> I'm actually really lucky that I haven't experienced too much racism in my life, but I, uh, I live with my stepmom, and she's white. And she's a lovely woman, I love her to death, but she would sometimes come off as accidentally racist, uh, which is hard because it's like, oh, you're my family. I don't know how to take this. <laughs> and I still don't. She, uh, she came home one day and I was there and the house was a mess and she was like, what's wrong with you? You don't respect my space. You don't respect my stuff. And I was like, oh, I do. I respect all these things. I just, I was writing and I was looking for jobs. I was busy. And she was like, oh, I'm sure you're working hard. Probably working like a slave. I mean, not a slave, not like a African slave. I would never call you because I'm not your master. It's not a plantation. Like, Stop apologizing. Please. My heart stopped and my brain exploded. Like, I don't know how to take it. And I don't know if I'm supposed to have like a, a sit down, full house moment where I'm like, these are things that you can and cannot say. Or if I just like brush it under the rug because she's old and my stepmom and I love her. I wish it was someone's job to tell me how to feel in those situations. Like a personal racist consultant. <laughs> Someone I could just call when I'm in a jam. Like if I was at a restaurant or something and I was like, hey, I'm in this restaurant and this white guy came up to me and asked me if I wanted some chicken. <laughs> is he facing this on stereotypes? Is this, is this racist? Oh, well, I am in KFC right now. <laughs> All right, yeah, sometimes I overreact. Thank you. <laughs> and then crisis averted. <laughs> I'll admit that one day. I, um, I got flashed recently uh, by a stranger and his stranger. Uh, I was walking down the street by myself going home and this guy approached me and he looked completely normal, just like sweatpants, t-shirt, hat, uh, but he wasn't normal because I didn't hear him approach. He was like a sneaky sex ninja predator <laughs> appearing out of clouds and he was like, excuse me miss, you need somebody to walk you home? And I was like, no, I'm good, thanks. And he's like, are you sure? And I was like, no, I got it, thanks. And I kept walking, and then he slowed down, pulled down his pants, took out his stranger, and was like, hey, miss, this is for you. Shook it at me. And I just looked at him, and 
I was like, no, and I just kept walking. <laughs> All the way home. And I got home and I was like, what was wrong with me? Why was I not faced by that? That was a 15 minute walk. He could have followed me or there could have been like another creep on my way home. I was so nonchalant about the whole situation. I like turned down his dick like he was trying to sell me a CD or something. <laughs> I see what you're doing, but no thank you. <laughs> Good luck next time. <laughs> now I was trying to think about it from his perspective because I don't really understand the uh, the urge to want to expose yourself for pleasure. And I, I feel like if he was up here describing the situation, he'd probably say something like, uh, uh, it was like 5 a.m. on a weeknight, and I saw this girl get off the subway by herself, and like, I've never done this before, but something, something about that night, I was like, yo, I kinda wanna show her my dick. <laughs> Fellas, you ever been in a situation before where you just want to get your dick out? You know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, society trying to box us in and make us metrosexual and like bring a problem. I got, you know, I got, I got it. I want to show it, you know? So I was like feeling like that, but like heightened because I was a little tipsy. And went up to this girl and I was like, all right, it's my perfect opportunity. No one's around. I'm going to pull it out. I don't want her to touch her now. I'm not a freak. I just want to show it. So I walked up to her and I was like, yo miss, did somebody walk you home? And she was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, are you sure? And she's like, no, I got it. And I slowed down and I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna do this. I, got it. I was like, no, get in there. You said you're gonna do it, Rodney, get in there. So I pulled down my pants, took me out my dick, and I was like, yo miss, this is for you. And then, um, and then nothing really happened after that. <laughs> she just said no, walked away, and like, she didn't have to touch her or nothing, but like, you know, like something, like, like ooh, nice, or like, ah, I don't know, <laughs> Walked away, like, nothing happened, like, it was kinda rude, really. <laughs> And then I thought about it, I was like, what if, what if that was the girl of my dreams, you know, I just showed her my manhood and she didn't want it. It's probably a bad first impression. <laughs> uh, and it was, it was a bad first impression. But I thought about it and that's not the worst encounter I've had with a dick before. <laughs> I've had dates that were worse than that. This guy was at least polite. He called me Miss. He asked if I needed to walk home. He double checked. He took out his dick. I said no and he put it back. It was like really respectful of anything. It was short and sweet. It was like a date with like a lot of stuff missing out of the middle. Everyone was honest with what they wanted. Probably the best date I've ever had, actually. <laughs> All right, I was a share. Thank you, guys.